federal investigators have now launched a civil rights probe into the shooting of Jacob Blake. So let's tell the story. Last night in Kenosha, protests continued, but according to local reports, they remain largely peaceful, even hours past curfew. Meantime, I'm sure you all heard that sports teams, including the Milwaukee Bucks, boycotted. I'd like to replace that with the word strike their playoff game last night in protest over Blake's death. Here are the Orlando Magic players leaving the court prior to the game. The NBA ended up calling off all of last night's game. Uh, Major League Baseball also followed along, postponing two games. Inside the NBA analyst and former NBA pl uh, player Kenny Smith, I watched this live, walked off the set last night in solidarity with the players. But I want you to hear especially what Clippers coach Doc Rivers said last night. It, it hits my heart. Take a look. It's amazing. Why we keep loving this country and this country does not love us back. My dad was a cop. I believe in good cops. We're not trying to defund the police and take all their money away. We're trying to get them to protect us just like they protect everybody else. The Los, An Los Angeles Lakers, as well as the Clippers, reportedly both vo voted to strike the remainder of the NBA season. But this morning, the NBA players have decided to resume the playoffs, according to ESPN. Uh, I want to get to your guys' opinion, but before we do that, I just want to quickly say the reason they're doing that, because a lot of people have been asking, how does this relate to Jacob Blake and Black Lives Matter, is twofold. One, there a lot of them are black men, and they had overwhelming responses. And two, the leverage they have is to not play, and that affects their white owners, a lot of the rich owners, and a lot of the people that schmooze with district, district attorneys in that area. Jeff, you and I had a long talk. Tell me what you're thinking, too. Well, that was my question to you. I mean, you kind of answered it already before I asked it, right? Yeah. So, Lindsay, I don't, you know, we've had this talk, Lindsay, and I don't want someone of color to explain something to me. So, don't, if I make you feel uncomfortable, if I come off being racist, just tell me. You know what I mean? I, I could take a word. I, I'd rather have a no, conversation. Not. You know, I'd rather have a conversation <laughs> no. than someone question where my motives are coming from. So, I want to be very specific on how I talk on live TV, right? I don't get the connection. Listen, first of all, I want to say Doc Rivers. Chicago ties, great guy. I've loved him for a long time. I even think my mom did jury duty with him, with his really? wife one time. You remember that, ma? I went to a weird place. Anyways, <laughs> I don't get the tie. I think having the messages, Breonna Taylor, Black Lives Matter, on the back of their jerseys, having those conversations at home with your son, with your friend, instead of walking, I don't get the connection why the boycott leads to better policing. Am I, am I missing something there, Lindsay? And if I am, call me an idiot. No, you're not an idiot, but I think that you're missing a huge point. So let's just start with the fact that two black or two people were killed at Black Lives Matter peaceful protest in the, and around Milwaukee, which is why the Bucks decided to take the first stance. And I get They're saying we're not playing and celebrating. We're not celebrating as black people this instance when a white man just walked in and a peaceful protest and killed two black people. I mean, killed two people that were supporting black lives and nothing was done. He went to bed and had his sleep that night and got arrested the next day. Mind you, in Cleveland, Tamir Rice had a toy gun in his hand and was killed by police, murdered by police, and he was 12 years old. So that's the big difference, and that's the problem in our country, because we can continue to watch sports and say black people are good as athletes, are good as entertainers, but they're not good as human beings. So outside of those capacities, we don't respect people. And so that's why I think when you tell owners, we're taking money out of your pocket, we are taking money out of the network's pockets, and everybody who schmoozes, like Tori was saying, with local and federal officials. For example, Robert Kraft, he's very public about being good friends with President Trump. So you can directly affect legislation. And so saying that Black Lives Matter, having your league be able to wear names on their back, that's all fine and dandy. But how about going down to the people that you break bread with and have dinner with and telling them exactly what laws you need in place and affecting legislation, donating money to real causes that will save black lives? Because outside of these players playing basketball, they have friends and families that actually are in danger of being killed by police or pedestrians that are racist. And so that's a real problem that we all have to deal with. In the same way that I sit here on television and have dialogue with you guys, I have a little brother that literally had an incident very similar and luckily didn't die with the police in the last couple of months. And so as much as this leisure, and you said we're all lucky to be doing this, and NBA players are lucky to be millionaires and doing those things, every day they have to deal with their friends and family that are not famous, dealing with a different lifestyle and sitting in that and knowing that they could die just for doing regular life things like walking to their car or like breaking up a domestic dispute or like 
running around a neighborhood. I'm naming all things that happened this year where black people died for doing nothing and being unarmed. And that's not okay when you're taking a stance, you're kneeling, you're doing everything that you can in these leagues to say you want attention and justice for black people, and that's not working. And your owners are largely silent when they have the power and authority to do much more. So don't ask why people are not playing. Don't ask why people are kneeling. Ask why owners are not doing much more. I think your message to me explained way more than walking off a basketball court because now I'm kind of getting the deeper issue of what you're talking about. Again, Lindsay, I'm sorry I'm ignorant, but I'm trying to speak for the ignorant people, I you're guess, in ignorant. America. You're coming from a different point of view, and Lindsay and you were having a discussion. But I, I, I'd much rather talk about this on TV, Lindsay, as strange as that sounds, than over a text message or over a tweet like the rest of America is doing because you get a lot more information that's coming in and out, having this dialogue, than just trying to flame the fires on but social media. But perhaps, and we do have to go, and we'll come back and have more. And I, but I think oh, you, have to look at, you have to look at people as humans in totality, right? In the same way that I, I look at you, Jeff, as a father, and so many other things outside of a television host. These are basketball players that are many other things that have family members that are being threatened on a daily basis because of the color of their skin. So that's why we have to look at the reason why they boycotted as an overall message to save black people's lives. And beautiful, maybe, beautiful, and, Lindsay. And maybe the strike helped bring up this conversation, which was wonderful.